I warmly welcome all of you to this virtual class. This virtual class is designed for Distance Learning Institute of the University of Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Dr. Jacob Adenyaju. I facilitate EDM 222 entitled Fundamentals of Economics of Education. What is this course all about? This course, EDM 222, Fundamentals of Economics of Education, is a composite course for undergraduates in the Department of Educational Management. The course is premised on the fact that resources in education and even in other sectors are not only limited in supply, but also have alternative uses. If this is a fact, education managers must therefore be acquainted with the various approaches to effectively and efficiently allocate these resources and as well utilize them. This course therefore is designed to train students on proper understanding of the elements of economies of education, as well as how to allocate these resources in economic sense. This is study session one. And the title of this session is conceptual clarifications. So I want to welcome you to this class, the first class ever, where we shall be defining some concept that we are going to meet frequently in this class. In order for you to get the most of the course, a proper understanding of some of these concepts will be necessary. The study session, therefore, will expose you to the meaning of some terms, such as economics, education, economics of education, decision makers, public and private sectors. What are the learning outcomes that we expect you to be able to achieve at the end of this lesson? By the end of this study session, you should be able to define economics, education, economics of education, decision makers in education, public and private sector. Now, let us start right away. We want to start with the first concept. And that first concept is economics itself. Broadly, economies can be divided into two categories according to different schools of thought. For example, there is a, a school of thought that believe that economy should be viewed in the area of wealth and welfare of people. Why another school of thought look at economy purely from scarcity point of view. It is on this basis that we have divided the definition into two categories. So I call them type A definition and type B definition. Let us examine type A definition. The major authors in the category of type A definition are Adam Smith, John Smill, Alfred Marshall, and so on and so forth. Let us examine the definition given by Adam Smith. Adam Smith was an economist who wrote in 1776, and he defined economics as a probe or inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations. What does this mean? To Adam Smith, he said attention should be focused on the reason why some countries are poor and underdeveloped and why some are rich and developed. Inquiry into this is what Adam Smith called economics. And because of his contribution to the development of economics, he was regarded as the father of economics. What about type D definition? 
The chief proponent of Thai B definition was Lionel Robbins. He was very prominent in the 20th century. And he defined economies in the spotlight of economic problems and scarcity. In specific terms, Lionel Robin defined economies as a science that studied human behavior as a relationship between ones and scarce means which have alternative uses. I am very sure in your previous classes of economics, you might have been told the reason why economics is regarded as a science and why economy studied human behavior. And you also might have been told the meaning of wants and scarce means. Although we are going to see this extensively as we progress in this class. Now that we have seen the meaning of economics, let us proceed to see the meaning of education. Just like we have, as we have many definitions of economics, we also have various definitions of education. But how do we define education? In the simplest of terms, we can say education is the logical process of exposing and providing an individual with the opportunity of acquiring knowledge, skills, values and attitude that we enable him or her to integrate effectively into the society. To look at this definition, it says education is a logical process. Logical process of what? Of providing an individual with what? Opportunity to acquire skills, skills, value, knowledge, attitude, that will make that person to be accepted in the society and also for him to be useful to himself and to people around him. Now that we have known the meaning of economics and education, we want to marry the two together to get a concise definition of economics of education. In this sense, we define economics of education as the study of how decision makers in education, that is the government, the parents, the teachers, the students, the non-governmental organization, and so on and so forth, choose to employ scarce resources to provide various types of education. You will recall that we mentioned before that the resources in education are limited in supply and that they have alternative uses. In this regard, efficiency and effectiveness must be emphasized in order for these resources to be allocated judiciously. It is in line of this that economic of education clearly guides how this is done. And when resources are allocated well in education, we are able to produce knowledge, to produce skills, values and attitude that will be beneficial to these individuals. We move to the next concept, and that is decision makers in education. When we talk of decision makers in education, these decision makers can also be called stakeholders in education. And they are the various individuals or groups of people or government or government organizations that are affected by education policies and that can also affect education policies. The decision makers can be divided into three categories. The first one, we have the household represented by the parents and private individuals. We also have the institutions represented by the schools and we have the society or the public represented by the government. We move to public sector. The public sector, as you see here, mean all production that are on the hand of the government as a central authority. For example, 
we have some means of production on the hand of government in Nigeria. This means that in its entirety, the government is the one controlling this means of production. And you will recall that frequently we talk of public schools, public hospitals, public airline, public this, public that. All those belong to the category of public sector. Then we move to the last concept that we are going to define today. And that is public and private sector. Just as we describe public sector as production that are in the hand of government, private sector here refers to all production that are controlled and managed by the private individual or group. In the light of this, we talk of private institutions, private educational institutions, private schools, private airlines, private hospitals, and so on and so forth. You will do well to assess yourself on how far you have assimilated all what we have discussed so far. How will you define the following concept in economies of education? Economics, education, economies of education, decision makers, public sector, and private sector. You will do well to reflect on what we have discussed before for you to ascertain your level of mastery of those concepts. What have we discussed today? And what can you take home from today's class? You will recall that we define economics as a social science subject that deals with proper allocation of scarce resources for the attainment of maximum satisfaction. You also recall that we define education as the logical process of exposing and providing an individual with the opportunity of acquiring knowledge, skills, values, and attitude that we enable him to integrate effectively into the society. And I'm very sure you will not forget that we define economies of education as the study of how decision makers in education, that is the government, the parents, the teachers, the students, and so on and so forth, choose to employ scarce resources to produce various types of education. You will also remember that I said, the decision makers in education are otherwise known as stakeholders in education. And these are the various individuals, groups of people, government or non-governmental organization that are affected by educational policies. The last but not the least, public and private sectors. With the Describe public sector as all production that are on the hand of the government as a central authority. Why private sectors refer to all production that are controlled by the private individuals or group. So learners, I am very sure you have enjoyed today's class. This is where we will end today's class. Join me in the next class where we shall discuss another important topic in economics of education. Till then, bye for now.